Hello, welcome back to CISN 300. This is going to be the lecture for week two in CISN 300. So let's take a look in Canvas and see what we need to do. Mm. And Canvas is loading spectacularly fast. Here's CISN 300. And I will go to uh, da, 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 modules and then I will go to week two and let's see what we have. We ha I have a little video here called week two NetLab lecture telling you how to get into NetLab in greater depth and this is going to be this lecture for week two and then there's a uh, PowerPoint on DHCP and DNS see what that looks like okay let's see here folks sometime this week this might load up <laughs> blinding i9 speed 3.4 gigahertz not even overclocked and what the heck is taking so long <laughs> It has nothing to do with the speed of the processor. It has to do with the bandwidth involved. And it looks like the bandwidth is going to give me a hard time. So I'm going to skip that. Helpful movies for this week. We have a movie on the theory of how DNS works. A movie on DNS installing and configuring in Server 2012, which is very similar to Server 2019. And automatic IP address stuff happening with DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. And then, finally, a little movie on how to install DHCP on, I think, Server 2012, which also is very similar to what we're doing here. And let's take a look at what else we have here. We have a NetLab. And we have two quizzes. How do we take these quizzes? This is what you do. You click on one quiz. And I will look at the preview and see what it's like. Oh, look at this. All true false questions. And there you are for one quiz. What about the other quiz? Let's take a look at that. Quiz two. The reason you have two quizzes is usually I have quiz one in week one and quiz two in week two. But I decided to give you a break in week one and then really lay it on in week two. <laughs> what does quiz two have? This is also true false and looks good. Good stuff. And then what do we have? We have those two quizzes. We have week two lab. This tells you what you need to do for week two. Deploy DHCP and DNS. Read about the topics in the text and online. Install and configure DNS and DHCP in your 2019 server. And configure an IP version for IP address. Add DNS DHCP roles on your 2019 server. Make minimum configuration of these and take screenshots. Then do the NetLab, NDG, NIS, GTC. All right. Network Plus, Lab 6. Hmm. Okay. So there's a lot to do here this week. You got two weeks. You got two topics, DNS and DHCP. You have NetLab for the very first time logging into it. And you have some helpful little movie links. You have two quizzes to take. You have the week two lab, which is going into your virtual machine and doing some stuff. And then you also have this uh, NetLab. I'm going to download this guy. This says Network Management. So I'm going to go ahead and download this uh, PDF. Can I do that? Yes, I can. Just click on the link here, and it will allow me to download it, I think. Why aren't you working? Hmm. At some point, it's going to allow me to download it, I believe. Hmm this over here no come on you're supposed to let me download it <laughs> I 
makes me into a liar every time. Okay, let's do this. Look at I have four copies, six copies of the same lab over here in the download. There's no indication that it actually downloaded it. However, it did download it six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Holy cow. No, seven. Because we've got one over here, too. Dang, man. What an obstinate thing this computer can be. Okay, so I'm going to get out of that. And we can go into NetLabs first, and I'll show you how to do that uh, in addition to the movie that is on that. Let's see, how do we get to NetLabs? we got to add another instance here, and then I will go to NetLabs on this link, and you log in with a capital W and your user ID name, and your password should be 1234567, unless you had a previous login to NetLab, and you might have a different password. In that case, if you have trouble logging in, after you have double checked that it's a W capital here and double checked the password that you tried to put in, then you may send me an email and I will reset your password. Hopefully everything will be okay at that point. And I'll send back the vital information in an email to you. So let's then hit log in. And then you click to schedule lab for myself. This is CISN 300, so you click that one, and then we want to look at Network Security, NISGTC Network Security, or was it Network Plus? Let's try Network Security and see what this says. Lab 6 is configuring, ver nope, it's not that one, back. How about this one with the Network Plus? Lab 6 is Network Management, that's the one we've got that we just looked at there, so it's this one network management click on that guy and then we have to schedule it I have July 9th because I'm going to do it right now July January 9th and I'm going to pick right now here anything below this red line is this time you can actually pick a different day if you want and a different time if you want to do your net lab at three o'clock in the morning it's entirely up to you and let's see, I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to hit Submit. Say OK, and I've got a little green bar here. This will not show up if you schedule it for a different time. And uh, when it's available to you on the time that you have scheduled, you can get this little green bar here, and then you can click on that, and it will take you to the pod and you'll have this kind of topology set up here. So what do we do with this? I'm going to lift this up a little bit and move it over. Hopefully we'll still be able to see it. Let me open up this guy too. Now we can jump back and forth pretty easily. Okay, what does it say? Network management and then it has three little objectives and it tells you step by step what it wants you to do analyze cpu network utilization use the event viewer to view logs manage patches and updates so which one are we logging into if some you can read this background information it's good for you to do good for you to know there's a picture of the topology they look the same looks good we're in the right place at the right time. And virtual machines and applications. Log into the following virtual machines before starting the tasks. So we've got Windows internal one, Windows internal one password, and backtrack internal, backtrack internal password. So it's root and tor, and the password is P asterisk, capital P asterisk, SSW zero RD. Okay, so we want the internal one and the internal, uh, <clears throat> this is internal one and this is internal backtrack. So let's go into internal one. Do not hit control alt delete because that will reboot your entire system. You want to do this and send a control alt delete. And then type in the password, which is capital P asterisk. SSW0RD and then hit the little blue arrow 
and away you go. You are logged in now. This may come up with a server manager, and it did, so you want to hit the little X here, it takes you out. Then we want to go to Backtrack 5 internal and send a control alt delete. And let's see what this is missing here. There we go. Hmm. Is it going to make me? Oh, here we are. It logged me in automatically, it looks like. Possibly. Let's see what we got here. Nope. It says log in at the very bottom there in microscopic font. Root, R-O-O-T. And then password is Tor, T-O-O-R. And then to get the GUI, you've got to type in S-T-A-R-T-X, start X. Start X Windows is what that stands for. And then you have your backtrack. And up here is a little command prompt that you can click on. Or terminal window, whatever you want to call it. And let's go back. We've got the two machines that we want. Internal 1 over here. Backtrack 1 here. Backtrack 5 internal. And then we would be able to do this lab, hopefully. Let's see what it says next. It tells you to log in. Click on the backtrack, type in root and tour. And then remote PC reconnect. Oh, okay. Start X. It didn't do that, so I don't need to worry about it. Analyze CPU network utilization with performance monitor. So let's go here to performance monitor. And it says, step one, how do you get the performance monitor? Click the start button and type in perf. Perfmon, probably. Let's try it. I'm going to type in perf. P-E-R-F. Yeah. Tut, tut, tut. Oh, gosh. There it is right at the top, performance monitor. I just had to type perf, and it was there. And then, what? Click on that thing underneath monitoring tools. There it is, performance monitor. There it is. And it's doing it. Monitor CPU utilization. It should have that on there already, I believe. Yes, it does. So the CPU isn't being used that much. So it tells you to go and do something else. In order to, uh, to see activity on our graph, we need to generate a workload for the processor. Give it something to do. We use Disk Defragmenter to generate this workload. Click Disk Defragmenter will open and analyze. Analyze. Disk Defragmenter. I'm going to go here to Control Panel. And it should be in here. Appearance, clock, ease of use, system and security. Oh, brother. System and security. Let's look there. Nope. Firewall, system. Where is this defragmenter? I don't know. So I'm going to do a search and type in disk. Defragment your hard drive. That's the one I want. And system reserve never run. What the heck are we doing here? So you want the top one and say defragment disk or analyze disk. Which one do we want to do? It says do, 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 do. type when compared to graphs or significant differences. Come on, just say which one you want had a new CPU, although the spike utilization was relatively short. Analyze disk. It sounds like a uh, movie with Robert De Niro and uh, <laughs> some others. Okay, I hit analyze disk. Oh, look at the spike in the activity of the CPU. Very exciting. Okay, so anyway, you, you just go through and do everything it tells you to do in here. And meanwhile, if you want to take a snap, snapshot of what's going on to send to me, that would be really good because then I'll know that you actually went here. The NetLab actually logs the fact that you logged in 
and it logs the fact of how long you spent, but it does not um, log what you did. So you need to send a snapshot to prove to me that you actually went to this lab. And I'm going to take a snapshot of this, like this, because this is probably unique to this lab. Do a file, save as, and you can make up a name for this lab six net lab that sounds like a good one and save it on my desktop and then once you're done going through all of the steps that it tells you to do in here you can go here to the reservation and say end reservation now say yes reservation ended and now you can log out of Wait, how do you log out? Doggone it, this thing is way off the screen. I'm sorry about that. This is where you did <coughs> end reservation up here. There was a, a choice for that. Now there's a log out that you can do. And I logged out. So I don't need that anymore. But what else do we have to do for this week? In addition to doing the NetLab, we need to do week two lab, which is to add DNS and DHCP to our virtual servers. So let's see how we can do that. I will go into VMware. And I'm going to open a virtual machine. Domain controller. That's not the one I want. I want to go to 19 server. That'll work. Windows Server 2019. And here's the virtual machine. Let's look at my virtual machine settings to make sure everything's good. I got eight gigabytes of RAM, which is fabulous. I have four processors set up and I have a 60 gig hard disk. And it looks like it's good. So I'm going to close this and then hit play that virtual machine. And let's see what we get. <clears throat> Here is my server 2019 that I have set up. And the thing to do with this is inside your server 2019 window, you'll see a little start thing. So let's click on that guy. And then there's the server manager up in here. So let's click on that. And inside server manager, you'll see the little... Uh, oh, it looks like it's good now. What we want to do, you'll see a blue bar going back and forth here if it's still loading. So wait till that's done. Then we want to go to add roles and features right here underlined and we'll hit next role based next and this is my machine named Fred next and here we have uh, the choices that we can add and there are, is DHCP and DNS servers so let's put a little checkbox in DHCP and then click on add feature and you see the little checkbox showed up and then DNS and add feature and then hit next and you don't care well those are roles I'm sorry we're on features now and we don't need to add any special features just those roles and then we'll hit next again and next again and this does not matter here we'll hit install when we get to where the next is completely grayed out starting installation we're doing DHCP server tools and DNS server tools so both of those are coming up this is exciting 
It's just like watching paint dry. <laughs> which I've had the pleasure of doing recently. Our house was painted. Okay, there we go. So this part is done. I can hit close here and you'll see a little yellow uh, yield sign notification. Let's click on that guy. Complete DHCP. And what does it say? Come on. Let's look down here and say commit and close. All right, we're looking good now. Okay, the other thing that we want, so you'll notice over here that has been added DHCP and DNS. You should take a screenshot of this to send to me in addition to the one that you had from the NetLab. And I will show you how to do that. You click on your snippet tool and you hit a new and we'll do this over here that proves that you have DHCP and DNS added and do a file save as and this would be lab uh, 1 a why not save okay we got that the next thing I would want to do is get out of the server manager and then go into the network. Oh, I don't care. Okay, no, we don't want to go into network. We want to go into control panel and network and internet, network and sharing center, and then change adapter settings. Go to ethernet, enabled. Go down here to properties, and then we want to go to Internet Protocol version 4, TCP IP, and say configure. Uh, no, we don't want to do that. We want to double click this. Say install. Oh, this is interesting. Add. Okay, son of a gun. What is it doing to me? I just wanted to do something really simple and it won't let me. Cancel. Why won't it let me? I'm going to try a different uh, thing here. That's Ethernet. Oh, let's do um, this one. Let's go here to properties. Ah, this one has TCP IP on here. There it is. No, that's version 6. I want version 4. Ah, here we go. And then go to properties again. That other one was not going for it for me. There we go. Now, you, want to, you have to pick the network that is configurable. The other one was a VMware thing. So let's go here to use the following IP address instead of obtain IP address automatically. If you do obtain IP address automatically, that makes this a DHCP client. If you put the following address in manually, this makes this a um, static IP address. So let's do 192, 168, this is fictitious by the way, 1 and put this as address 7 for example and the subnet mask you can just click on it it will fill it in as the default class C subnet mask and the default gateway you want to put as 192 168 1 and 7 also could be your own default gateway prefer DNS server I would put your same self in here too and then 7 and we can then take a snapshot of this proving once again that you are doing what the lab tells you to do let's see click on this and hit new and then we can do this and say file save as lab 1b 
and we'll hit save and close this and if I say OK here it will change the settings on this and if I hit close here it's going to change that and it's going to make this thing an identified network and it's going to look stupid so I'm going to change it back again just for our purposes because I do not want to uh, make this thing non-functional <laughs> which is what that would do version 4 and then properties and I'm going to click it back to obtain automatically and obtain automatically OK and close and let's see hey there you go network 2 it's gonna be good again okay so I don't need that anymore let's take a look at uh, the settings for DHCP and what I want to do here is type in here DHCP uh -huh. let's see what happens nothing okay uh, I don't think that that way is oh there it is we got it I'm sorry there's the DHCP and here's Fred and it has IPv4 and uh, server options policies filters okay there you are so this looks like uh, something that you could take another picture of so let's do that new and we'll do this and say file save as and this is lab 1c I see a pattern emerging okay so we don't need that anymore let's go DNS and see what that does I'll type search for DNS DNS desktop app there we go look at that forward lookup zone reverse lookup zone trust points very exciting so what I'm gonna do now is take one more picture do, 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 do. let's see what we got here huh. let's take a look let's go through here to this one and hit new and we take a picture of this do a file save as lab 1 D save close we don't need this anymore I am going to log out of this hit shut down other unplanned continue and there it goes it's gone and what else do you need to do you could attach all of these uh, files that we have made and send them to, in an email to me. See, notice I have NetLabs Lab 6, Lab 8, or Lab 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D. And you could send them to me in an email, or you can upload it in um, Canvas. But if you upload it in Canvas, you need to remember that you have to do it all at once. You cannot do it uh, individually because each time you upload something individually into an assignment, it wipes out whatever else was there for whatever dumb reason they set up Canvas that way, but that's the way it is. So the thing to do if you're going to do Canvas, I would uh, take a make a Word document. This is a, a clever thing you can do. You may open up a blank Word document like this and then put these guys in here inside the Word document and there we have it look at that man put them all together into one thing and you could file save this Word document on the desktop as week one 
lab and hit save and now we have a word document that has all of that stuff in it and you can upload that one word document or you could send the word document to me as a uh, attachment on an email and there it is you can see it has it all in there isn't that nice yes okay I'm closing that I think that's it for what you need to do this week and remember you need to do uh, read the stuff about DHCP and DNS go into your uh, virtual machine and make um, or add DHCP and DNS as uh, roles and do NetLab, Lab 6, take a screenshot, take screenshots of this, and do Quiz 1 and Quiz 2. And then you'll be ready to finish for the week. And I know that seems like quite a bit of stuff, but it won't take you that long. I hope you're enjoying this class, and I will talk to you again next week.